Hello everyone and welcome to Jojolian Chapter 69 Review. And first things first, let's just acknowledge that we're on Chapter 69. So whatever shitty joke you want to comment about that, do it now. Alright, get it out of the way. Alright, good. We're done with that. So let's get on to the actual chapter here. No Ultra Jump cover this month, so nothing to talk about there. So we can get right on into the cover page. And of course, chapter is continuing this arc, The Rock Human and the Rock Animal Part 2. And of course, um, my expectations for this chapter were a little low. I expected it just to be a lot of high action movement panels, um, you know, relatively short as well as, you know, no arc in the middle of a battle, especially against two enemies is going to end on its second part. So I'd say we're in for a good... Um, uh, at the end of this chapter, honestly, I'd say like four, maybe, no, probably probably about par four parts. I couldn't see this arc going on for uh, five parts, especially these chapters being uh, monthly. Really, every arc ends around its third or fourth part, but considering there's two enemies now, this one could go on a little longer, but it seems to be wrapping up soon um, based on the end of this chapter, so three or four. Getting onto the cover page of the chapter, though, we just have a nice portrait of Josuke's face here. Um, nothing really to talk about here. Eyebrows on fleek. Um, just a good looking Josuke, he's got sort of Brainstorm, uh, Brainstorm, yeah, it's called Brainstorm, the Burr Puzzle Stand, uh, sort of affecting him, almost foreshadowing the later, uh, part of the chapter, and, um, yeah, pretty good portrait of Josuke, not much else to say there, so let's get right on into the chapter, like I said, a lot of action, probably gonna be a shorter review, not a lot to mention, but we do get some interesting dialogue, and some motivation behind these new rock human and rock animals, uh, actions, so let's get into it. So where the last chapter left off was uh, sort of a cliffhanger on Mamazuku. He had the burr puzzle stand, brainstorm all over him, and he was like, I'm gonna kill you, Plant Appraiser, first. Like, my killing order is, uh, like, in my killing order, you are number one. And uh, Mamazuku had brainstorm all over his face, and it's like, damn. All right, Mamazuku looks like he's gonna be pretty much fucked. And I was like, I think Mamazuku's gonna be pretty safe, considering with what happened to Yasuo, how she also had Brainstorm all over her. And she was relatively fine. Uh, you know, she was able to walk all the way over to pole number six and get the water on her. So I, I predicted that um, Mamazuku was going to do something new with doggy style that we haven't seen yet. Last chapter, he turned into fucking Spider-Man, roping around uh, the ski lift. So in this chapter, I was like, Doggy style is still a relatively new stand introduced to the series. We've only seen it used a few ways, so all I am predicting is that Mamazuku is going to get extremely creative with his stand. Um, I sort of predicted that he would unravel his face and just unravel his entire body and maybe fall to the ground gently or something. And, uh, you know, him affecting his face and unraveling would maybe uh, get rid of uh, Brainstorm. But what actually happens is far more badass than my prediction, but we'll get onto that later. So, chapter kicks off with a quick description of uh, Brainstorm. So, the way it works, of course, it's shaped like a burr puzzle, and it has little spikes in them that are called feelers. And that's sort of how it travels and also um, uh, pierces the skin. So, obviously, they're able to move just by rolling, but when they're going up trees and stuff, it's sort of like defying gravity, but now we see they have little spikes on them. So, the spikes are just like little points of traction that they can roll on. So. Um, we see as it's sort of more of the mechanics of them. So once they're attached to skin, they extend and then they, they're, they're able to turn. So it sort of just breaks into the body and that's how you create these holes here. So, um, once they, uh, touch your skin, um, some spikes will shoot in and expand and that's what creates the, the giant hole effect. And then we actually see that they're much larger. Uh, or they, they're, they're, they're much larger before they actually enter the body, and then once they get in, they get much smaller as they travel through blood vessels and they attack uh, red blood cells. So, uh, interesting stand, really is, the mechanics of this. Um, I'm sure if I looked more into it, um, I, I'm sure I could find something, um, uh, some, something more significant that they're based off of. But uh, as for now, they seem to be pretty large on the outside. Once they enter the body, they shrink down, enter blood vessels, and they, per uh, they proceed to attack and destroy red blood vessels, which are important to live. So that's how it works, and of course we are restated. Stan user is Urban Gorilla, and Stan's name is Brainstorm. Been listening to a lot more uh, Hawkwind lately, and those are really awesome musical references. And um, we just get another panel of Mamazuku's face as he begins to be affected by it. As you can see, the holes are starting, and uh, scary stuff. I mentioned in the last chapter, sort of Urban Gorilla has a very aggressive personality, a very angry guy, um, you know, making lots of threats and stuff. And, uh, like, this is awesome dialogue. And we also see a better look at uh, Urban Gorilla's design. Although, I will say his design seems, like, kind of lazy. 
Like, Mamazuku, of course, has his bodysuit, and oh, I didn't even mention, I'm a Mamazuku today. Um, finally, we're getting into uh, the fall season. It's September now, so it's not 80 degrees, 90 degrees every day, so uh, I'm more comfortable to wear this. And of course, as long as Plants Brazer, Mamazuku is still relevant in the story, I'm going to be in his cosplay, okay? <laughs> I haven't gotten cosplay in about a month now, um, going through withdrawals or something. Uh, I do have some cons upcoming soon, so... Um, it just feels good to be back in cosplay after like a month of not doing anything with it. So, um, yeah, I'm in Mamazuku today. I didn't even, I, I kind of forgot. Uh, but anyways, uh, Mamazuku is in like a bodysuit. Uh, I'm way far familiar with that as I <laughs> recreated his entire outfit. Um, but with Urban Gorilla, he's also in a bodysuit, but it's just like, it's, there's no real design to it. I mean, it's just like a skin type bodysuit with some stripes on the legs or something. Um, I don't know. There's just nothing that stands out about his design, uh, except for, of course, his mask that he wears. That's just the most significant thing that represents his character, really. And we can see the back of it, uh, how it's sort of strapped together, and also a better look at, I guess, the back of his, like, breathing apparatus. Again, I still will say Urban, Urban Gorilla's design is, like, I don't know, it's meh. Like, as you can see in the bottom right of this double-page spread right here, like, it's just, there's nothing significant about, um, you know, his torso or arms or anything. It's really just his face, although his face is awesome because he has a little windshield wiper on it. That's badass. But um, the, the dialogue he says to Planet Brazier is so funny. He says, I think I'll turn you into laces and use you to tie my shoes. And then I'll go to the Higashikata estate and get the new Rokakaka. So slowly re they're revealing their motives. They know about the new Rokakaka and they're trying to uh, achieve it. We knew that because they know Mamazuku is going to be able to locate it. So that's why they came after him first. Um, so now, like I said, this arc would, is going to be shifting through the perspectives of Josuke and Yasuo and Mamazuku and... Uh, urban gorilla and do Re me is such a like a fucking x factor in these chapters like he doesn't talk or anything he just exists he's just there to mess things up and uh just be a new dynamic to the fight so honestly dude after this chapter um i guess i'll talk a little bit more about do Re me at the end but i don't know dude i, I don't really like him there's nothing to like about um this this rock animal he, i don't even think he has a stand like it's just him like there's no ability at all i mean of course he has an ability but that's just like him i don't know i don't even know if it's a stand or anything so um now we're shifted back to the perspective of uh, Josuke and Yasuo, and we get this panel of Josuke, like, sympathizing with Mamazuku, like, he's sweating, he's looking at me, he's like, Mamazuku-san, like, oh my god, like, he's, uh, like, what'd you think was gonna happen, Josuke? He explained to you he was the number one priority, he doesn't have a very good stand for offensive capabilities, and you just fucking left him, you jumped off the ski lift last chapter, dude, um... Oh my god. And then Yasuo is just sitting here bitching. Like, Yasuo has been, honestly, dude, I have some problems with Yasuo too. She's been the worst in the last couple chapters. Like, she really doesn't, she hasn't done anything significant in this arc at all. And she says, just because I, I had to come to these mountains, um, all of this is happening. This is all, uh, I think she says it's all my fault. What does she say? She says, all of this, um, it's all my, and I assume she was going to say my fault there, but Josuke cuts her off and he's like, Yasuo, don't talk like that. It's like, Yasuo, that doesn't make any sense at all. This is, none of this is your fault at all. You just happen to be here. Like the, the everyone, like the initial person that they were after was Mamazuku. The only reason Yasuo is in this situation right now is because Mamazuku confronted them and was like, okay, you two, okay, you two are together. Okay. You guys are protecting me right now. The rock humans, they came to my estate. I had to come track you guys down because you have a good stand for offensive capabilities, soft and wet. So you are going to protect me it's like Yasuo how is any of this your fault at all that doesn't make any sense um I don't know she's just um being frustrating right now to say the least so really nothing else significant in their scene here um you know Josuke just reiterates that they have better offensive capabilities than us and that's the only real threat we're in right now and then they're on the rock bed of course so and then you just see do re mi just existing again like slowly working his way towards them on the rock bed moving like two miles an hour but like I don't even like do re mi's design that much he just he just looks weird and ugly and I, I still don't like that term, the rock animal. Like, are, is that the only explanation we're going to get for his existence? There's rock humans and there's rock animals. And, they, and, and rock animals just happen to be these, um, you know, massive creatures with crazy abilities. So, like... Do, not a fan of Dore Me as of right now. So we uh, shift back to um, Mamazuku and Urban Gorilla's uh, perspective in the battle now, which is definitely the most interesting thing happening in this entire arc. So within the next few panels here and pages, we really get a lot of information that's a lot to take in and has a lot of significance as for the future of Jojolian as we sort of, um, you know, 
Urban Gorilla explains his motive and also explains why the rock humans want the Rokakaka in comparison to humans. And a little bit, it's a little bit abstract, but it's sort of hinting towards like, uh, like a world domination um, goal. So this dialogue here is, it's going to be a pretty shit world up ahead for all of you. On the other hand, for us, it's going to be a lot of fun, as in the rock humans. And he also mentions sort of how insignificant... Um, the goal for the humans are uh, getting their hands on the new Rokakaka. He says, um, you know, you want the new Rokakaka um, for things like healing disease, uh, live a longer life, and earning money. Um, all, of that's good and um, all of that's true, but the Rokakaka is something we've known about since way back, and they say they've been cultivating it, but apparently um, the rock humans want the new Rokakaka for not wealth, not to live longer, um, not even to make money or anything, something bigger than all of that, which is strange because I thought it was established that the enemies that wanted the new Rokakaka were rock humans and doctors that wanted to turn the new Rokakaka or just the Rokakaka in general into technology and be able to reach the, the, you know, the place of not dying, being immortal and being able to exchange your cells out with the new Rokakaka. So he says, you know, Maybe, maybe the overarching thing is, uh, in the end, immortality, because he does say, uh, or long, like a longer life, but, you know, a longer life isn't exactly immortality, that's just, you know, a little bit long, immortality is just forever, so, um, it could be that he's talking about, uh, immortality right here, when it's like, um, you know, the thing that you guys want the new Rokakaka for is so petty, um, you know, we, we have a, we have a much bigger idea than, you know, making money and just, uh, you know, curing disease and stuff. And this next bit is also really interesting. I never thought about this before. And he says, um, the equivalent exchange exists for us, the rock humans. I ain't going to explain the whole thing, but the humans and Rokakakas, uh, they aren't very compatible. It's got something to do with carbon. Um, <laughs> like that, that's not me just like babbling right here. That's actually what he says. He says it's got something to do. Um, he also, he, he talks like not really illiterate, but just like slainy. Um, he says it's got um, something to do with the carbon and stuff in your body's cells are quite different. Um, and the quality of silicone compound organisms. Um, so that does make sense that the Rokakaka really isn't as compatible with humans because as we have seen, every time someone uses a Rokakaka, it results in some sort of rock transformation, like the baseball player who, you know, I think his like arm was going out or something. He ate the Rokakaka and like his whole mouth just like turned, um, you know, it just, it just went, his bottom jaw went away. But I think his arm was reinforced with like rock. And uh, also the people in New Guinea, when they, you know, their teeth started to fall out and everything, when they ate the new Rokakaka, they grew new rock teeth. So, um, you know, from what we've seen with the Rokakaka, it, it very much um, seems like it would be a lot more compatible with rock humans, which makes sense. So, I, I like, I can kind of see Urban Gorilla's perspective here. Like, <laughs> like, do you not understand, like, how much better the Rokakaka is for us, and you guys are just wasting it, like, you guys aren't compatible with it? Um, I don't know, that's just something that makes sense to me. Like, don't use something that you're not compatible with when there is another species that, you know, this fruit seems like it was made for. And again, trying to decipher what their motives are, he says, well, you guys are uh, in a daze over making money and health. The new Rokakaka will bring a whole new world to us, an exciting world where you guys constantly sink downward and our rise to the top will come. So it seems like what um, you know, again, although we have all of this information about his motives, um, we know they're rock humans. The biggest thing that's still bothering me is that we don't know Urban Gorilla's affiliation. We don't know who he's working with. We don't know who his allies are. We, like, we know his goal, but where the fuck did you come from? Like, the big enemy up until now was the Rokakaka trade exchange, the, everyone that was in it for business. And, like, eh, it's so strange. This guy must be, like, woke as fuck. Like, he must be so transcended above all the other rock humans. Because, like, Damo Tamaki, um, you know, Tsuyu, Dubiwa, dude, forget his name. Like, that whole group, they, and, and Jobin and everything. Jobin's not rock human, but, of course, he was involved in the trade. Uh, they were doing this to make money. Um, but then this rock human comes along and is like, us rock humans don't want any sort of money or health reasons. We want this to bring on a whole new world. So clearly this man did not have any affiliation with the with the drug trade, almost the Rokakaka. So I just I, that's all I want to know is Urban Gorilla's affiliation, who's above him, who's below him. That's it. And we don't find that out. So again, a bit frustrating, but um, exciting dialogue here. Um, he wants to use, he wants to use, use the new Rokakaka or this new group of enemies to create a world where the rock humans reign supreme. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the Gears of War story, like the locusts, they live underground and they want to like come up to the surface and, uh, you know, just take everything back. So, um, you know, this isn't a new story or anything. This has been, ex uh, expanded upon, of course, in other mangas and stuff before. Um, 
fucking Lord of the Rings, dude. <laughs> like an underground world, people who uh, live in secrecy want to rise up and uh, take the take the surface, you know, away from the, the humans. Rock humans want to take the world for them. So, like, nothing mind-blowing here or anything, but again, it is an interesting motive in comparison to the business side of things when we were, in, like, in the arcs of, like, Domotomaki and stuff. Um, you know, this is a bit more compelling. So with pretty much all of the exposition of the chapter out of the way, all the important dialogue and stuff, we get into just straight stand-on-stand -stand action, which is awesome. And like I mentioned earlier, I said Mamazuku is going to do something new with Doggy Style. He was going to, you know, use his ability in a creative way to try to get out of this situation. And what the fuck does Mamazuku do? He turns his arm into a goddamn crossbow. Like, the most badass thing I've seen in Jojolian yet. Honestly, a fucking crossbow. Um, just the panels, like, you see him doing it. Obviously, him and Urban Grill have some space between them. And you see Doggy Style activate. It's on, his, it's on his right arm. It's kind of freaky to watch this because my outfit is, like, so similar to his. Like, if you look at his arms and stuff, and mine are just, like, I don't know. Like, if it, it's, like, since this cosplay is, like, hella accurate, like, looking at this, I'm kind of, like, I like I feel like I have Doggy Style's ability, but, um, rip, I don't. So, uh, we see Doggy Style start to activate. It's, like, okay, what's Mamazuku up to here? Um, what's going on? Uh, you really don't decipher it until you see when he pulls the fork out. And he, on his right arm, dude, he loads the crossbow with the fork and shoots it out. So badass. And this just, like, Doggy Style is just, like, a... It's like it's so similar to Stone Free, but in just such a different way. Like I don't know, man. Instead of string, it's just like a thicker string. It's more just like uh, you know, like bandage wrap, I guess. But um, again, Doggy Style, fucking cool, man. And he nails Urban Gorilla right in the eyelid. Like that had to hurt so bad. Breaks his little glass. Uh, his little monocle that he has, and um, yeah, dude, this crossbow was like the coolest thing I've seen in Jojolian in in months maybe maybe years honestly this is awesome and um of course uh like josuke said you know they don't have very good offensive capabilities like doggy style is cool you just gotta be really creative with it like lo like mamazuku is trying so hard to defend himself right now like he has the uh i keep wanting to call it the burr puzzle stand but i know it's brainstorm um so he has brainstorm all over his body and i love this panel right here where you just see mamazuku just not giving up dude like like such uh determination within him and within him and like he's not like like we don't get any inner monologue from him like like Josuke why didn't you protect me like he's just like dealing with the situation that's presented to him and not like being a little bitch about it at all that's why that I, I love Mamazuku so much he's just he takes you know shit happens um and he's just you know trying his best to make it out of the situation alive like ah like burr puzzle stand all over him loading up his crossbow again just trying to shoot shots at him uh and these are just, like, really awesome panels here, dude. Like, just go back and through the chapter and just take in all of this awesome artwork we see with the stand battle. Like, best stand battle we've had uh, since, like, Vitamin C here. And, like, Mamazuku covered in holes right here. In last chapter, I was like, I, I don't think Mamazuku's gonna die here. But, like, um, we'll talk about it more once the chapter ends because there's something that changed my mind. But right now, when I was reading the chapter here, I was like, dude, Mamazuku's gonna die. The plant appraiser's fucking dead. Like, I, I have no idea how he's going to get out of this situation. As we've seen with his hand, once the holes begin to create, you can't fix that. You can't fix that at all. And someone mentioned in the last video, like, oh, Araki already forgot that Mamazuku's hand, um, you know, couldn't be regenerated. His hand was still gone. You know, he didn't lose all his fingers. He just lost his thumb. He lost, like, sort of, like, this section of his hand. And that was still gone in the last chapter. You just got to look closely. But he still has his fingers. Make note of that. He didn't lose his entire hand. Mamazuku being completely affected by Brainstorm. It's all over him. This is the most we've ever seen. And Brainstorm is like, Brainstorm is a really powerful ability. These things seem to travel extremely fast and there's so many of them as well. I don't even think I mentioned earlier, once they're in your blood vessels, they duplicate. They begin to, they, they begin to expand and it's just, uh, damn, it's a really good stand. Very powerful. And, uh, you know, Mamazuku just, he just can't hang. He's, he's taking so much damage. He's hanging on with just his, uh, just his left arm right here. And, uh, eventually we see that he falls down. Um, the strain breaks and he gets one last shot. And obviously he was aiming for him with a fork. And, um, this is a pretty important panel right here. You see, um, a little circle where it breaks and that signifies that Mamazuku is now falling. And when he shoots his bow and arrow, um, his, not his, his arm crossbow made out of strain, um, he hits the, he hits pole number seven. So like originally when I first thought, when I first read the chapter, I didn't think much of it. I was just like, Oh, he just, he meant to hit urban gorilla and he just missed that sucks. But, um, then again, I was like, maybe this was like a cock type moment. Like maybe he's just trying like, um, 
like maybe he, because he knows he's kind of fucked right now and he doesn't see a way of him surviving this situation, he's saying, okay, what's the best possible thing I can do for the future? Even even when I'm gone and I'm dead after the situation, how can I make this fight better for uh, Josuke and Yasuo? So, um, you know, I might be overthinking it, but possibly he was just trying to hit Urban Gorilla and then the strain fell and he missed. But the fork went into pole number seven. And what we know about pole number seven is that that is where gas is. And his original plan um, that he already explained to Josuke was that there's gas in pole number seven and I want to, um, you know, get the gasoline so we're going to be able to light him on fire. So I think maybe what Mamazuku was doing here is like, I have one shot left and I'm I, with, in my condition, no way I'm going to be able to make it to pole number seven over here. So he shoots into pole number seven and maybe in the next chapter, we'll see some gasoline leak out of there or something like that. So either he missed or he did that on purpose, um, to, get some gasoline leaking out of there. But then we get like the saddest pan panel ever, dude, of Mamazuku just falling to the ground, just like thump. And he's just down there just like, ah, be like be holes all over him. Uh, I, like, I'm so mad at Josuke right now. Like he clearly explained to you, like as soon as you met Mamazuku, first things first, this is the priority. I am number one priority. In the middle of this fight against like the deadliest stands we've seen in Jojolian yet, Josuke just leaves him. Josuke jumps off the ski lift and just leaves Mamazuku against Urban Gorilla to fend for himself. And I don't know, dude. Like, I'm totally... If Mamazuku dies in this fight, like, Josuke is going to be, like, my least favorite JoJo. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, dude, like, what the hell? Like, you just left You just left this guy to die. Like, he said, like, if you don't protect me, I'm pro Like, he didn't say I'm probably going to die, but he was like, I don't really have a good stand for offensive capabilities. And I am the only one that's going to be able to find the new Rokakaka. It just... Just fucking protect me. Just use common sense. And Josuke is just like, nope, nope, Yasuo. Gotta protect Yasuo. Gotta protect Yasuo when she's in really no danger whatsoever at all. And they don't even care about her. <laughs> like, like they're they're after Mamazuku after all. Like, they don't even know who Yasuo is. But, um, again, more sad shit. Mamazuku, like, on the ground, like, fucking, uh, like, doped out. <laughs> like, dying, falling over. Holes all over his body. His entire face is affected by Brainstorm. And at this point right here, I was like, Mamazuku's gonna die. My favorite character in Jojolian so far is going to die. Like, what the fuck? And, um, but then later in the chapter, um, I was sort of convinced otherwise. Then we flip back to Josuke and Yasuo's perspective. And now, once the shit is at the fan and Mamazuku is essentially dead, now Josuke realizes the gravity of the situation. And he has a new appreciation for, uh, Mamazuku. We see a picture of Norisuke in the speech bubble and it says, Great confidence. Although I went back to chapter 59 when uh, Nor Norisuke introduced the plant appraiser to Josuke. He never talked about great confidence or anything like that. So that was just um, Josuke making his own um, characteristics of Mamazuku up. He says, I fully understand now. I understand why Norisuke san puts so much trust in you, not just as an appraiser. Um, I now see why I need you no matter what it takes. So it's like, okay, why didn't you realize that like last chapter uh, when Mamazuku wasn't completely dead yet? So um, now Josuke is like, he sees Mamazuku on the ground, essentially dead, just fell from like, I don't know, 12, 20 feet up high into the air, maybe even more. And um, I, I like just things don't look good for like, there's not many situations I can see right now where the plant appraiser comes out and is like, Okay, I'm good now. Because I don't know how you can heal those holes. Like, those holes are... They're there for good. Um, unless you can do something with Doggy Style. I don't know. But then, um, of course, Josuke and Yasuo on the rock bed again. Um, Josuke is just... Fuck the bullshit. And uh, he, he, it's cool because uh, Urban Gorilla's big thing was like, I have my killing order. And he explained to it. And then now Josuke is like, I have my own order as well now, motherfucker. And he says, first, I'm going to take him down. And Yasuo, of course, being, uh, you know an over dramatic uh drama queen right now she's like no just okay don't go there don't save the plant appraiser don't do that <laughs> that's the worst idea ever um shut up yasuo <laughs> honestly honestly if i had to pick between yasuo or mamazuku give yasuo the axe <laughs> that's gonna offend a lot of people sorry guys so um we get some cool panels of josuke walking towards uh urban gorilla and of course some really cool shit urban gorilla does and uh do re mi is in the rock bed moving super slow so it's like like i'm trying to imagine this um scene animated like how slow is do re mi actually moving him like ah he's just, he's not doing anything he's just like an annoying uh extra factor to this fight so do re mi is just not good right now and um we see Mamazuku again, just some uh, amazing art panels. Josuke walking towards uh, Urban Gorilla again, and Mamazuku, like, sort of looking up, like, what is this guy doing? Like, 
is he finally going to try to save me after all this bullshit? And um, we get sort of the Dio and Jotaro type moment with uh, Dio walking towards Jotaro, but uh, Josuke walking towards Urban Gorilla here. And Urban Gorilla says something pretty lame here. He says, living organisms exist above rocks and soil, but once you meet your death, you exist below them. Uh, you people, you get careless, you end up below the rocks forever. The rock humans, that is. So it's like, I don't know, this guy's just trying to come off as like the most villainous character ever, like making threats and saying, you know, bad puns. <laughs> and I don't know. Like, I, I guess he is a pretty intimidating character, but um, I don't know, not doing it for me. And here's probably the best looking panel of the chapter here. When Urban Gorilla... Um, it looks like he's walking down the pole, but he's actually just jumping off it. Like, he just jumps off it and sends out Brainstorm all over the ground. And Brainstorm immediately starts, like, you know, breaking the ground down by making all these holes in it. So, um, there's just, like, a little section that has holes all over in it. So, then once Brain, uh, once Urban Gorilla actually gets there, since the ground is so, um, you know, it's structural damage, it has so much structural damage, it just, like, collapses and he just immediately goes underground, which was pretty cool. Like, I would love to see that scene animated right there, but I can picture it pretty well in my head. Like, when he goes down, he's like... Whoo! <laughs> like, underground now. Josuke immediately goes after him, attacks, Ordo 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 Barrage, and then, um, out of nowhere, where we thought Do-Re-Mi was stuck in the rock bed, um, I think it's Do-Re-Mi that says combine. The speech bubble looks like it's coming from his mouth rather than, uh, Urban Gorilla's here, so it'd be interesting to see if the rock pet could talk, but I think the speech bubble's just up there because, um, you know, it would interfere with Do-Re-Mi's design being shown, and, uh, Things are not looking good for the gain here, um, as uh, now we see that Urban Gorilla says, I am a rock human, I am above all of you, and then I don't know what the fuck happens here, Josuke just, Josuke just dies, like, <laughs> I guess Josuke just got, like, plunged into the ground or something, um, it's really just a panel of Josuke being shoved into the ground, I guess, and he just has blood all over him, and he, has, and he also has the brainstorm holes all over him as well, and Yasuo was like, ah! everything's happening right now and then uh you see mamazuku again with that same expression on his face and then we get a little insight here um from a narrator that says are they superior in every way and that's the that's the end of the chapter right there and it's like originally um you know of course josuke and mamazuku aren't gonna die our main cast isn't just gonna die here but uh originally when like mamazuku had the holes all over him i was like that's it for him He's done, but now at the end of the panel, or the end of the chapter, now that I see that Josuke is really beat up as well, and he has all the brainstorm holes in him as well, it's like, okay, maybe Mamazuku has a fighting chance here, because Josuke is not going to die. Um, that just doesn't make sense. Um, that would never happen. So now that, like, it's kind of strange in a way, like, now that our main character has all these wounds that uh, Mamazuku has, I have more confidence now that Mamazuku has a chance to survive here, so... Um, but predictions for next chapter, sometimes I have like, like odd predictions I'll make like, oh, this will probably happen in the next, I have no idea what will happen. For all I know, Kyoni Jimura will show up with Born This Way and be like, ride or die motherfuckers and, <laughs> and, uh, save them some way. Like, like I really wouldn't be surprised next chapter if a third party came in, uh, to this situation here, because as it's, I don't know why Josuke said that bullshit, like, uh, they have better offensive capabilities, and I was like, Josuke, you have, like, you have the most powerful stand ever. If you really wanted to, you could probably use Soft and Wet to steal the Burr Puzzle stand, Brainstorm, from your blood cells. It's like, Soft and Wet is so OP. Uh, not recently, more in earlier, Jojo Lane had all these crazy abilities that it seems to have just forgotten how to use. But, anyways, end of this chapter here, like... Honestly, things don't look good. The only person that is capable of doing anything is Yasuo, and I have no confidence in Yasuo at all that she will do anything significant at all. I don't. I can't see a way that she saves them. Um, again, unless the fork that Mamazuku threw into pole number seven comes into play, and uh, you know maybe when uh, Urban Gorilla you know jumped down or something, he got some gasoline on his back, and now that he's combined with Doremi, maybe if they were able to wait. Uh, maybe if they were able to find a way to ignite the gasoline, um, that'd be sort of like an insta-kill because he's trapped inside Do-Re-Mi. Um, he would sort of just be in like, just like trapped in like a fire pit. So that's like one way I could see them solving this, but I don't know who's going to be able to do that. Mamazuku, maybe he still has some fighting spirit in him right now. He looks like he's out for the count. Affected by Brainstorm, fell from like a 20-foot drop, probably has a broken bone or something, but... Now, Josuke's in the ground. He's, of course, all bloody as well, covered in Brainstorm's ability. 
shit, man, we have a month to wait. Let me know your predictions down in the comments below. Like really depressing chapter here, but um, yeah, rock humans, very powerful. Their new goal is to rise above society and um, you know, bring on the new world. So interesting stuff. Only thing I really want to know though is their affiliation. Who do they work for? Um, is it Kato? Probably will be, but we'll see later. Um, again, high action chapter, really interesting. That was JoJolian, chapter 69. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And yeah, guys, I will see you next month to figure out how Mamazuku and the gang get out of this one. All right, guys, take it easy.